Chapter 13 The Law of Alignment Everything we think, say, and do must be in alignment with what we want to manifest. When our beliefs and actions are out of alignment with truth, it creates pain and problems in our lives. The more closely our beliefs are aligned with truth, the greater power we have to manifest our creations. We can't manifest what we want when our beliefs are misaligned with our desires. A person can say he wants to be a millionaire, but if deep down he believes he's not worthy of having money, it's never going to happen. Our beliefs must be pure, whole, and undefiled by contradictory beliefs and desires. We must be single-minded in order to gather the power we need to accomplish our goals and realize our vision. Furthermore, our beliefs must be aligned with truth. We tend to assume our beliefs are truth, but this isn't necessarily the case. In fact, very often it's not. Truth is independent of belief. It is absolute, objective reality, regardless of what we believe about it. Believing the earth is flat doesn't make it so, for example. We lack power to the extent that our beliefs are false. The more aligned our beliefs are with truth, the greater power we have to manifest a positive, purposeful reality. False beliefs hamper our creative power and lead to poor and mixed results. We are all limited by false beliefs in one way or another. Through the law of alignment, we have the consciousness and tools to overcome them. In Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill teaches that our brain is both a transmitter and receiver of energy. He says the subconscious mind is the sending station which broadcasts thought, and the creative imagination is the receiving set through which the energies of thought are picked up. Holding conflicting beliefs makes us transmit mixed signals, which can even stop transmission entirely. Conflicting thoughts essentially cancel each other out and obstruct the law of attraction. Interestingly, although few people are truly aligned in their beliefs and desires, we have a natural instinct to be aligned. That instinct is cognitive dissonance, or the discomfort we feel when we hold conflicting beliefs, desires, or behaviors, which I detailed in Chapter 9. Essentially, cognitive dissonance is an awareness of misalignment. Sadly, however, we tend to handle our cognitive dissonance and align ourselves in counterproductive ways. For example, suppose a person is torn by the desire to smoke and the fact that smoking is unhealthy. To eliminate the cognitive dissonance, he would have to align one with the other. In other words, either he'd have to stop smoking or he'd have to convince himself that he can beat the odds or that smoking will be worth the cost. Most of us choose the latter. Instead of leveraging cognitive dissonance to our advantage, we use it to justify misaligned behavior and self-deception instead. We fiercely defend our false beliefs because we can't bear the thought of being wrong. We can't stand not being consistent, so we'll do anything necessary to be consistent, even if it means deceiving ourselves and rejecting truth. We become very selective about our perceptions and see what we want to see in order to keep our false beliefs. Once we accept a false belief, all evidence points to that belief being true. In this self-deceived state, we don't want to take responsibility for our emotions, behavior, choices, and results. We play the victim card and blame other people and circumstances for our failures. We thus remain disempowered and unable to get what we truly want. Misaligned people have given their power away through victimhood, blame, or negativity, or through simply not having a clear vision. No one can actually take our power from us. We simply relinquish our power and then point to people and circumstances as the reason why we've done so. But in reality, our power is waiting for us to take back any time we want it. Think of a car that's out of alignment. If you take your hands off the steering wheel, it's going to veer off the road. You may have your GPS set to a particular destination, but if you let your misaligned car have its way, you'll never get there. 
you have to take control of the steering wheel. Even better, you can get to the root of the problem by taking your car into the shop and getting it aligned so it's easier to steer. Being misaligned in our beliefs is like driving a misaligned car with our hands off the steering wheel. It's no wonder we can't arrive at our desired destination. The real challenge with this law is that most of our misaligned desires and contradictory beliefs originate in our subconscious mind. So most people aren't even aware of their existence, let alone aware of how to conquer them. Getting into alignment all comes down to one thing, engaging in regular belief breakthrough work. How the Law of Alignment and Belief Breakthrough Work Together The Law of Alignment helps us bring our hidden, subconscious beliefs into the light because of the principle of cognitive dissonance. As we become more conscious about what we want and then focus our conscious thoughts on our goals and dreams, any beliefs that contradict them are brought to the surface. For example, Suppose you want to increase your income from $60,000 a year to $150,000, but subconsciously you don't believe you're worthy of it. Your goal and your belief can't coexist. Either you have to change your goal to align with what you believe you're worthy of, or you have to change your belief to enable your dream to come true. As you leverage the law of attraction, that subconscious belief of unworthiness will be brought to the surface and you'll be able to purge and replace it through belief breakthrough work. This is the Law of Alignment in Action. Case Study Amanda S. Quits Smoking Amanda had a breakthrough experience when she attended her first Limitless event in which she had a breakthrough experience. This is her story in her own words. I started smoking at age 14. I'm 35 now, and I can't tell you how many times I've tried to quit smoking. I've tried medication, hypnosis, fake cigarettes, you name it. My husband and I almost got divorced because he hates the smell. To mask the smell on my clothes, I would smoke in a robe, which I would carry with me everywhere. I even had cancer a few years ago, and I smoked right through it. Every time I tried to quit, something would bring me back to cigarettes. It's frustrating to me because I feel like such a hypocrite. I'm in a network marketing organization that promotes health products, and here I am smoking. I've also been in personal development for over 15 years. I've studied with many mentors. I knew I needed to change, but I just didn't know how to do it. A friend of mine told me about Limitless, and I agreed to go. However, I went with a very skeptical mind. I thought, what's he going to tell me that I haven't already heard? I slowly opened up, however, as I could tell that there was something different here. Chris made a statement that you can change anything if you are in alignment with your beliefs. It got me thinking that just maybe this could be the way out of smoking for me. Wouldn't it be cool if I could actually quit for the last time? Chris took me through the belief breakthrough process. The number one limiting belief that came up for me was, no matter what I do, I can't quit smoking. Next, he asked me to think of the first memory that came up when I had that thought. I remembered being caught smoking by my mother when I was 14 or 15. She got really mad and grounded me. I thought it was strange because she smoked. The hypocrisy made me really angry. I realized that in that moment I made the decision that I make bad choices because I make them. Meaning, I own my choices. They are mine to make, so I'm okay with them. That decision didn't serve me well. I got into a lot of things I shouldn't have growing up. I changed my belief to, I choose to make good choices. A couple weeks later, I wrote in my journal, I am a non-smoker. I am putting it out there and making it real and believing it. I was halfway joking, but I could really see the possibility. A couple weeks after that, I got down to my last cigarette. I didn't buy another pack, and I haven't since. It's the strangest thing to me that I can't explain. 
I went from smoking at least a pack and a half a day to quitting cold turkey. I have no emotional connection to cigarettes. I've had no cravings or withdrawals. I even bought some e-cigarettes and carried them around like a crutch. I haven't needed them at all. It's also catalyzing major changes in every aspect of my life. I started going to the gym and hired a personal trainer. I've lost weight, and my husband loves that I no longer stink like cigarette smoke. Most importantly, I've stopped being a hypocrite. The law of alignment has really come true for me. Once you make a decision and it aligns with who you are and what you believe, your whole world will change. It's like when you throw a stone into a pond. You never know what the ripples will do when they hit the shore. Take action and apply the law of alignment. Commit to going through the Belief Breakthrough script every day for 30 days and witness your life transform. Here are some selected quotes on the topic discussed in this chapter. Live as if you were living already for the second time and as if you had acted the first time as wrongly as you are about to act now. Viktor Frankl We have been taught to believe that negative equals realistic and positive equals unrealistic. Susan Jeffers <laughs>